Welcome to Leadership Live. I'm Daphna Horowitz, and this is a podcast for leaders like you who want practical tips to apply in leading your business, your people, and yourself. Now, I know that leadership is a skill that can be learned, and this podcast is about doing just that. Every week, I'll talk about what really works. You'll learn to shift your mindset and practice from being good at what you do to getting great at leading people who are good at what they do so that you can get the business results that you want. Whether you're a first-time manager, entrepreneur, or seasoned executive, you're at the right place. This podcast takes you from talented expert to extraordinary leader. So get ready to master your mindset, inspire your team, and elevate your business. Welcome to yet another episode of Leadership Live. And today's episode is going to look a little bit different. Today's episode is in the format of q and I've had a few questions that have been submitted to me on various social media platforms. And I have this uh, new thing that I call hashtag AMA, ask me anything. And you're really welcome to ask me anything that you want, whether it's leadership related, whether it's something that you want to know about me or anything that comes to mind that you would like to hear my thoughts or musings about. So please do feel free to submit your questions, make it hashtag AMA, uh, leadership live, and let me know what are the questions that you have for me that you'd like me to answer. And I will be every so often doing these kind of episodes where I answer a question that has been submitted to me. And the reason that I think it's so important is because I think that if one person is asking a question, then there are many more people thinking about that question that would love to hear the answer. And that's why I've decided to do this episode in a question and answer format. And the other thing is that actually I believe that there is no such thing as a stupid question. I think questions are the things that help us to grow, help us to learn, help us to be curious about the world around us. And so I always encourage questions, discussion, conversation, because actually I think that that is one of the basis of being a leader. And I actually say that conversation is one of the tools of leadership. So let's start a conversation. Let me know your questions. I want to know what's on your mind, what answers you would like to hear about. And let's begin. So question number one has come from Yuval Raphael. And Yuval wanted to know, what are the most important qualities that a leader or great leader needs to have? And that is a really good question and very interesting question because I'll start off by saying thank you, Yuval, for submitting the question. I'm happy to answer it. And most importantly, there is, in my opinion, no one right answer when it comes to actually answering this question. What are the most important qualities that a great leader needs to have? Because there are so many qualities and every leader will give their own personal twist or personal brand or flavor onto their leadership style. And I really think it's important to own your leadership style and be aware of how it is that you come across and aware of your influence on others. So there are some qualities that I believe are really important. And there are probably others that I'm not going to mention today that might be equally important. And the most important thing is for a leader to own their own personal style and make sure that they're having the influence that they want to have on the people around them. So I'm going to share with you five qualities that I think are really important qualities for a leader. And I'm going to start with this one, and this is really no particular order. It's not to say that one is more important than another, but these are, for me, the top five. And the first one that I'm going to start with is having a clear personal brand. I think a leader needs to have a very clear, specific idea about, as a leader, what your purpose and values are, what you stand for, what is your personal brand, how are people perceiving you, what kind of an influence you're able to have on the people that you're leading, and really understand that, be able to clarify that and be able to articulate it. So we might have some sense or notion of our leadership style, our leadership brand, but can we articulate it? Can we articulate our personal purpose, our personal why in a very clear way? Can we say what our top values are? Can we say what our mission is in this world? 
Do we know what our strengths and you know weaknesses are? And those are things that we, I think we need to be really clear on because this is something that's very connected to self-awareness and learning and growth. So if we're clear on where we stand and if we're clear on our strengths and our weaknesses, then we know what we need to learn. We know how we need to grow and develop and we know how we influence others and where the gaps are. So a leader we know cannot be great at everything and we need to be able to know you know what is it that we're good at and where do we need help and support in terms of making sure that the team and the people around us are actually supporting us in being able to implement our vision activate our vision so i would start with that understand your style understand your leadership brand understand your purpose and be able to articulate it and take a stand for it now this doesn't mean that and, and i have sometimes heard this from leaders who say that well you know this is how i am this is my personality i can't change people need to just accept that this is how i am and kind of live with it for the good and for the bad and this is where i disagree so knowing who you are and taking a clear stand for your brand doesn't mean or, or give an excuse for behaving in ways that are not or, or not having the influence or impact that you want to have. If we understand what our brand is, we understand where our areas of learning and growth are. And that is an equally important part of our personal brand. So knowing that there are some things that we are just not going to be good at. So how do we get the support to actually develop those and get better at it? So having a clear brand and having a clear purpose helps us to stay strong in who we are. And at the same time, it also helps us to understand what do we need to learn? How can we grow and how can we develop ourselves? So that really ties into the fact that leadership is a constant learning journey. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more as well. So that's my first element is that element of clear personal leadership brand and self-awareness and you know leading into learning and growth and development all part of the same same area or the same quality. The second quality that I'm going to talk about is the one of having clear communication. Okay, so this is an area that I find is quite challenging for leaders. So sometimes as a leader, you may have a big vision, a big goal that you want to implement. You might be a fast thinker. You might have all the elements very clear in your mind. And yet when you communicate it to others, you make assumptions about what is understood and what is not understood, what is clear and what is not clear. And the picture might be so clear in your mind and you don't realize that actually there is not that much clarity for the people who you're leading and they need more information. They need you to break it down into steps. And that is sometimes an area of challenge for leaders. I think leaders really, really need to work on developing clear communication, being clear on, the, on your message speaking directly and being specific. So sometimes we also speak in large concepts and big notions, but we find it hard to break it down into steps so that the people who actually have to go and implement can understand what we want from them. And another area there, which is very closely connected, is the whole topic of feedback. And I really want to do another podcast episode on giving and receiving feedback, because I think it's a huge topic in particularly in business and organizations, I think also in personal relationships. And it's an area that requires a lot of skill and attention. So when we're looking at feedback, I think we need to be able to deliver both the positive messages and the tough messages with kindness. And what I do see, and, and this is a, a huge element of leadership is there are many leaders who will avoid the tough messages because it's hard. It doesn't matter what position you are in in your business organization. It's never easy to give across a tough message. And we'd rather avoid it until we absolutely have to do it. And that is part of getting your communication as a skill, getting it right and being able to deliver those tough messages with kindness as well. That's area number two. And then quality number three is being able to have a big vision, being able to see the bigger picture, connect the dots 
and really create an inspiring vision for the people and the business that you're leading. This is important because when we are a leader in a business, the people around us are often looking to us to give them the direction in terms of where we're going. And it is up to us to create a vision that is so inspiring that when we're stuck in the weeds and when we're facing challenges, we have enough of a vision and a purpose to really keep us going when times are tough. And we see that, especially when we're facing challenges, when we're facing crisis and huge periods of change, we need a vision. We need something in the future to look forward to in order to keep going when it's tough. And that is the leader's responsibility to really create that vision, to flesh it out, to describe it in a way that can really get people excited, enthusiastic, passionate and inspired. Because if you're feeling inspired about the journey that you're taking your team and your business on, then your team is also going to be impacted by that. Enthusiasm and excitement and passion is infectious and you want to be able to uh, really bring your people on board with whatever you're seeing is the bigger picture of your business and your mission. That's really important. Linked to that, I'm also going to say, is having a strong sense of mission. So what I'm really seeing is understanding how your vision for your business that you are leading is connected to a sense of mission of doing something good in the world. I'm noticing that more and more people are wanting to see that the work that they're doing is providing meaning in other people's lives or giving them a sense of meaning in their own life. And when we are able to say we're making a difference uh, to the lives of the people who we are serving, it really adds a dimension which generates more joy and fulfillment and engagement within a business. So a story comes to mind for me in this particular case, and that is the story of a CEO who runs a large organization, thousand employees. And for him, when I once spoke to him about his vision and his mission, he really expressed how he was so inspired to be able to provide employment opportunities for a thousand people in his country. And for him, having come from a very poor disadvantaged background, it was an incredible thing to see that he was now the CEO of a business that was providing employment, gainful employment for a thousand people. And that was incredibly meaningful for him. So when he spoke about that and what his organization can do because of his sense of meaning, it was inspiring for anybody hearing his story from his childhood and his upbringing to what he created today. That is something that people really want to look to their leaders to to be able to feel inspired about. And then I'm also going to connect here is really being able to connect the dots. So a leader is someone who can step back And I've spoken about this before, the analogy of being on the dance floor, being on the balcony. This is about going onto the balcony, stepping back, zooming out and looking at your business and your people from a distance so that you can start to connect the dots, see what areas need more attention, which areas are interacting with which and how everybody is working together and what the whole picture looks like so that you can then connect dots, see gaps, see where you're doing well and really feed that back to your business and your people in order to generate more improvement. Okay, so that was point number three. I'm now going to go to point number four, and that is about being comfortable in the gray zone. Okay, and for me, that is really about being comfortable with ambiguity. And we see that more and more, and especially where we're living today in uh, Corona times, we know that there is so much uncertainty. The more we discover, the more we realize that we're uncertain about many, many things surrounding this particular pandemic situation that we're in. And one of those is how long it's going to take. And I think what we're really understanding is that we are actually in this kind of state for a while. And, and you know, this is the new normal that we're in. And we now need to accept that this is not a temporary thing anymore. We're in this state with a lot of uncertainty, a lot of ambiguity, a lot of not knowing and really getting comfortable with that. And I think this is a key quality for leaders is being comfortable 
with uncertainty, being able to lead through uncertainty, being comfortable with being uncomfortable, with not having all the answers, with not always being able to tell people what's going to happen next or where we're going or how things will really look. But what you can be kind of more certain about is that you will be around and you will be there for them and you'll be able to communicate as effectively as you can. And even when you don't know, tell them that you don't know. It's okay to not have all the answers, but you can offer a solid, stable foundation by being there, by being communicate, communicative, being open, hearing the concerns, voicing some of your own concerns, being comfortable with being vulnerable. And that requires a lot of courage and it requires um, just a level of confidence to know that we're doing this step by step. We're being very present with what's going on right now. With we dealing with every situation as it comes up. We have the agility and flexibility to work with things in a way that's different to what we're used to. And that if we're going to be doing this together, then you know we have each other's backs and we can support each other and collaborate and see this as something that we're in together. And I've actually been looking at how do you share leadership responsibilities. So you are not going to be the leader who's the hero who comes with a silver bullet that's going to solve everything because many, many businesses and 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 people are in a state of such uncertainty that we don't have that silver bullet and we don't know when when it's going to come. So we really are managing our being in this present situation in the best way that we possibly can. And that's challenging. That's very challenging to, as a leader, have to say, I actually don't know. There's a vulnerability in that. The, you know, sometimes not having the answer or not being the hero feels like maybe we're doing something wrong. If people are looking to us for answers and guidance, how can we say, you know, I really don't know. And yet what I've seen in many situations and cases where change has had to be done or we're restructuring the organization or something surprising or a sale and you don't really know what's going to happen and you don't know what's going to be next and you don't know if they're going to be layoffs. And certainly in this case, we've had many, many people losing their jobs. We can still stand as a leader in this unknown space and be okay with that. As tough as it may be to be okay with saying, I don't have the answers for you. I will share information as much as I can, when I can. Let's voice our concerns. Let's talk about what's bothering us. And while we may not always have the solutions, we may be able to come up with some measures that will help us along the way if we're in this together. And again, I'm going back to if the communication is open and clear and welcoming. So that is point number four. And that kind of leads beautifully into point number five, which is for me all about empathy. And this is about leaders knowing what empathy is and practicing empathy. So for some leaders, it does not come naturally. It's much easier to focus on the rational, on the facts, on the data, on what's happening on the ground and let's deal with it and move on and create a plan and follow the steps. But you can't do it effectively and you can't do a leader or you can't be a leader if you're not showing empathy, if you don't have a level of emotional literacy where you're able to identify the emotions that come up and talk about them. So you don't want to just ignore the emotions. And I certainly have spoken to yes, many leaders and, and some of my clients as well who say when you, we come to this uncomfortable ground of challenging situations, people are feeling uncertain, people are feeling uncomfortable, we'd rather just ignore it. We don't have the answers, so we don't really know what to say, so we'd rather keep quiet. And I always say that keeping quiet, keeping silent, creates more anxiety around us because if we're silent and, and we may be feeling worried and anxious as leaders, but we're not talking about it, it kind of gives us a, a signal to our people that maybe there is something to worry about. And yes, there may be something to worry about, but if we could talk about it, it often uh, creates a level of safety that at least this is being considered, that it's not being brush, you know, brushed under the carpet, that it's not being ignored, that people's feelings and emotions are understood. 
So even, even if we don't have solutions, showing that we care and showing that we understand how tough the situation is goes a long, long way for people to feel cared for, to feel like they're actually valued and important part of this whole process and not just being ignored or being expected to continue to work, keep their head down and get the performance and the results out. This is a very challenging area, but incredibly important in terms of empathy and open communication and showing that you care and having conversations, especially when it's tough. So those are the five qualities that have come up for me when I reflected on this question of what are the most important qualities for a great leader. I'm just going to go through them again. And I spoke about having a clear personal brand and continuing to learn and grow yourself, having a clear vision, seeing the bigger picture and being excited and enthusiastic about it so that enthusiasm is contagious and you can bring people along with you in that having clear, direct, specific communication, delivering tough messages with kindness, being comfortable in the gray zone, okay? Being comfortable with not knowing, not having all the answers and being able to sit with that and share that and work on it together with the people around you. And then finally is really practicing empathy and empathy is a skill that can be learned so even if it doesn't come naturally it is something that we can learn to do we can learn to do it but first of all developing emotional literacy so understanding what emotions are about developing a vocabulary around the different emotions that we can have and then expressing those talking about that and showing people that you really do care and what i'd like to end off on is what i think about as three qualities of extraordinary leadership. And for me, what I see come up again and again in terms of what it really means to be a leader and not really only the successes that you see when you see good, strong leaders who achieve amazing things in this world who really make a difference, whether it's in their organizations, communities, or even on a, on a worldwide scale, there are things about leadership that are certainly not just uh, present in the great outcomes of making a difference. And that is the first one is that leadership is actually messy. It's not always a straight line. In fact, I don't know that it's ever a straight line from point A to point B in terms of the outcomes that you want to achieve as a leader. So you've got to be able to embrace the mess and know that, as I said before, it's you don't always have the answers. You don't always do the right things. In fact, you often make mistakes you show vulnerability, you talk about the hard times, you bring people along with you through challenges and change and crazy times like uh, you know pandemics and all sorts of things like we're in now. It's messy, but it's about going the distance, keeping it going, having the courage to get through day by day the hard stuff and keeping on going. The second thing for me is that it's an all-in Thing. Leadership is something that you do in many areas of your life, in many areas of business. It's, we're all leaders in some way and in some area, and we all have a certain influence that we really have to own. It's a, it's a responsibility, and it's something that is constantly there. So just like you can't be half pregnant, you can't be a leader in one place and not a leader in something else. Leadership is about the qualities that you cultivate. And when you cultivate those qualities, you make a big difference in people's lives around you and in the mission that you take on. And it really does begin with you and how you show up. One of the sayings that I really love is who you are is how you lead which really says that it starts from the inside. It sounds starts from who you are inside, deep inside, your internal qualities. And that's what we've been talking about today. And that you can never run away from. It's not something you could switch on and off depending on where you're at or what situation you're in. Yes, you'll change your qualities or you'll change your approach or your style depending on the situation. But being a leader is something that you're always, always on. And then the third thing is really that leadership is about service. And this ties into what I said earlier about leadership not being you being the hero, having all the answers, bringing the solutions when there's a challenging situation. And this 
particular time that we're in has shown us like no other that it's absolutely true. No one really has answers at the moment. No one has solutions. So let's step into our leadership, understand that we are about serving each other, serving our community, serving our business, sharing leadership. You know, everybody steps in where their areas of strength are and really learning and growing together so that we can create the results and performance and outcomes that we really want. And I'll add to that even the life, you know, not always about performance and outcomes. It's also about what kind of life you want to lead and how you connect to purpose. So I think I've said quite a lot actually about leadership and leadership qualities. And I'll end off this podcast episode right here. And again, thank you to Yuval for asking this question and watch out for future Q&A episodes. And if you have any other questions for me, do let me know, reach out, tell me what they are. I'd love to answer your questions. And remember that leadership is something that we cultivate from the inside. It's about having that level of clarity and energy to own our leadership, step into our responsibility of leadership. And the key tool of leadership is conversation. We've got to be having those conversations. We have to be talking. So I'll end off with that quote that I mentioned that who you are is how you lead. It starts with us on the inside, our qualities, our personal style. Own that, step into it, communicate, have those conversations and wishing you all a beautiful leadership journey. And this wraps up another episode of Leadership Live. Thank you for joining us today. You can head on to my website at daphnahorovitz.com where you can download many resources, including a chapter of my book that will show you how to get through tough times and define a big vision for your leadership and your business. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and I'd be even more grateful if you'd share it with a friend, leave a review and a five-star rating so that I can continue to reach and support leaders just like you. Tune in next week to Leadership Live where talented people become extraordinary leaders.